Hi everyone, in this video we are going to learn about Press syndrome that is posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome. We will first see the concept of brain edema and cerebral perfusion and autoregulation. After that we will see the etiology of press, pathophysiology of press, clinical presentation of press syndrome, diagnosis and treatment. Brain edema can result from many different types of brain injuries. Brain edema can be of two types, vasogenic brain edema and cytotoxic brain edema. What happens is, normally in the blood brain barrier, there are tight junction between the endothelial cells as you can see here and there are astrocytes around it. In vasogenic edema, due to some insult, there is loss of this tight junction and there is leakage of plasma filtrate from the tight junction into the brain interstitium. Vasogenic edema can be seen in ischemia, trauma, infections and metabolic derangement. While in cytotoxic edema, there is swelling of this endothelial cell and also swelling of astrocytes and neuron and this leads to membrane breakdown and cell destruction. Now let us try to understand the cerebral perfusion and autoregulation. Basically brain tissue requires constant perfusion to maintain adequate delivery of substrates. And to maintain this constant perfusion, brain has got a unique property that is hemodynamic response of the brain. By this hemodynamic response, brain has capacity to preserve the perfusion pressure. And this occurs across a wide range of systemic BP. That is, whatever may be the systemic blood pressure, either hypotension or hypertension, brain has this hemodynamic capacity to preserve the perfusion pressure. And this cerebral perfusion pressure is what provides the driving force for the circulation across the capillary beds of the brain. Now, let us try to learn how the brain does it and what is the hemodynamic response. So basically autoregulation, it is a physiological response to maintain the cerebral blood flow as we have just seen and this is done by altering the cerebrovascular resistance. That means there will be either increase or decrease in the cerebrovascular resistance to maintain the cerebral blood flow as per systemic blood pressure. If there is decrease in the blood pressure, there will be vasodilatation of arterioles and if there is increase in the blood pressure there will be vasoconstriction of the arterioles and this will help to maintain the constant perfusion of the brain tissues across any blood pressure but at the extreme levels of mean arterial pressure or cerebral perfusion pressure the flow becomes equals to perfusion pressure and at this time the autoregulation fails it means that at a very high blood pressure or at a very low blood pressure this autoregulation mechanism fails and this can lead to brain injury in form of hypoperfusion or hyperperfusion. Now there is also some other factors which determine the cerebral blood flow and that is pH and PaCO2. Whenever there is hypercapnia or acidosis the cerebral blood flow increases while whenever there is hypocapnia or alkalosis the cerebral blood flow decreases and this is the very same thing that happens whenever the patient hyperventilates. Whenever patient hyperventilates, there is hypocapnia and alkalosis and the cerebral blood flow decreases. That's why in increased intracranial tension, we prefer to hyperventilate the patient. And both of these occur due to pH related changes in the cerebral vascular resistance. Let us now come to the actual topic that is posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome that is PRES. It is basically hyperperfusion disorder and now we are well aware what is hypoperfusion disorder and what is hyperperfusion disorder. Now moving ahead to etiology of Press syndrome. Basically there are two main pathophysiological processes by which Press syndrome can occur. The first one is the increase in capillary pressure and the other one is endothelial dysfunction. We will see both of them one by one. First of all disorder in which pathophysiology is increasing capillary pressure. This can be seen in hypertensive encephalopathy, post carotid and arteric trauma syndrome and preeclampsia or eclampsia. Under hypertensive encephalopathy, it also includes secondary causes such as renovascular hypertension, pheochromocytoma and cochineus. Disorders in which pathophysiology is endothelial dysfunction. This includes calcineurin inhibitors, chemotherapeutic agents, HELP syndrome and hemolytic uremic syndrome. Calcineurin inhibitors for example cyclosporine or tacrolimus. The toxicity of these drugs can lead to development of Press syndrome. 
chemotherapeutic agents for example cytorabin azathioprine 5 fluorouracil cisplatin pentotrexate tnf alpha antagonist all this can lead to development of press syndrome and the pathophysiology is endothelial dysfunction and we are well aware of help syndrome and hemolytic uremic syndrome so in press syndrome there is vasogenic edema which leads to neurological dysfunction in press syndrome both the mechanism can be seen the first one is increase in cerebral auto regulatory threshold that means there is increase in the cerebral blood flow and capillary leakage into the interstitium and the another one is direct impairment of blood brain barrier we have already learned about both the mechanisms now there is posterior in the name of press syndrome why this posterior basically it involves posterior circulation more why because there is lower threshold of auto regulatory breakthrough in the posterior circulation that's why posterior circulation is more involved than anterior circulation now how does the patient presents to us basically patient can present to us with headache seizures focal neurological deficit altered consciousness and even coma the seizures can be of multiple types depending on the location and severity of the edema and can be even non convulsive seizures the focal neurological deficit depends on the location the typical deficit is cortical visual loss as we have seen that it involves posterior circulation more and this occurs due to occipital lobe involvement now how to diagnose press syndrome mri is preferred over ct scan mri shows high t2 signal of edema in the posterior occipital lobe but it can occur at any lobe ct shows patchy hypodensity in the involved area vessel imaging such as angiography shows narrowing of the cerebral vasculature in posterior circulation there is no use of csf analysis as csf analysis is non specific we can also check the serum levels of drug causing press we are well aware of the all the drugs that cause press syndrome for example chemotherapeutic agents and calcineurin inhibitors now these are the slides of mri from two different press syndrome patients you can see the t2 signaling of edema in both the cases now once you diagnose the patient with press syndrome how will you manage the patient we have to remove the offending medications if any we have to treat the underlying condition such as hypertension help syndrome or hemolytic uremic syndrome lowering the blood pressure is very important step and can be done using iv labetalol or nicardipin but if the blood pressure is very elevated first decrease the main arterial pressure by 20% that means you you don't have to be very aggressive while lowering the blood pressure you have to decrease the main arterial pressure by approximately 20% because in such patient further lowering of the blood pressure may lead to secondary ischemia or infarction as the pressure drops below the lower range of the patient's auto regulatory capability in case of seizures we can use anticonvulsants and in case of eclampsia we can use magnesium sulfate so that is it for the video guys i hope you enjoyed the video and for more such videos make sure you hit the subscribe button and also share with your friends